Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. The sweetest, nicest person here. I have to tell you, we've been having a great conversation. Alice Cypress, she's actually an author. She's a lot of things. She's a neonatal uh, nurse over at the Broward Health. Um, uh, you know, they have many hospitals, but... Uh, you're actually there at, are you at the Imperial Point? No, you're down. The one for a lot of Yeah, yeah, right. The main Imperial one. Point. Oh, the one. That's right. Broward General. Uh, we were just talking with the CEO there, so that's uh, that's a lot of fun. But, but you know, everybody has to have a passion for a lot of things. And, of course, Alice, when she talked to her, you know she has a passion for babies and taking care of them. But she has another passion. And we featured her. Um, we featured her as Book of the Month. And uh, we did that in our January issue, and the uh, it was a wonderful. It's a wonderful book, and if you've read Boomer Times, you'll know it's called Thaddeus the Barracuda, and it's it's kind of weird when you first look at say, well, what is this all about? But as you get into it, even as a grown up, you really realize that there was so much more in there than just a little fish story. So welcome to our show again, Alice. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So you're here early in the morning, and of course you're used to this. What are your hours as a nurse? When do you get in there to the hospital? I work seven thirty to, I mean seven to seven thirty a.m. So seven I, to seven thirty. So you work yes. the night shift. Yes, all night. All night, and uh, and you've been doing this for a long time. It's quite an experience for you, isn't it? I have a very long time, and I'm a night person. I'm not a morning person, but. Um, I managed. I decided to just stay up all night so I could be here on time this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so you're very sweet about that. But but you're um, do more things. This is a crazy question. Uh, do more things happen at night in the hospitals than they do during the day? I, you know what I'm asking? It's strange. It seems like it's more well, treacherous at night. Well, for some actually, is tends to be calm at night. Um, Compared to daytime, because there's more people there doing the daytime. Um, all the managers are there doing the daytime. That's when all of the procedures are done and the different tests are done. As to uh, with night shift, it's pretty calm and quiet. And, you know, on the adult floors, I know that the patients tend to, the you know, the elderly don't, tends to get sound uh, sundowners, which they get confused and they start, you know, yelling more and walking more in the halls. But other than that, it's pretty quiet at night. So, you know, so the babies, um, of course, we see movies. Most people don't get to go into the little um, pediatric floors and all, unless it's their child. But um, you see them, and each one, you know, is is so individual, of course. But they're, you, you want so much to do something to help them uh, because actually you're in where they're very tiny. Mm-hmm. You know, this isn't just the general, you know, when you have a baby, of course. And nowadays you have a baby, aren't you gone in a day or two with the baby? Two days if it's a vaginal delivery, three days if it's a C-section. Huh. Yes. Okay, well, that certainly has changed from the time <laughs> when I was having babies. But now with um, the neonatal, don't some of those babies stay for 30 days and even more? Um, yes, some of them are there for months. Um, even had one or two to... Turn a year old, so turn uh, a year old. Now, what would be wrong with that baby? Uh, mostly, it could be just complications dealing with um, the lungs um, that would kind of keep them there. They are on oxygen for a long time um, while you're trying to hopefully help their lungs develop. So sometimes they'll go from the neonatal intensive care unit to the pediatric intensive care unit when they get older, and they stay there for a while as well. Um, but for most of them, you would say maybe about a month to three months, and they're usually home. Amazing! After that. Think about that. Now the parents get to come. Do they get to touch them? And they do. Um, if they're extremely small, um, they may get to touch and may not get to touch. But as they start to get older, then you can kind of stimulate them a little bit more, so you can touch them more. They can hold them. Um, in the beginning. Um, up until about 35 weeks, they're not able to drink from a bottle, so they're getting their feedings through a tube. Um, so at that point, sometimes we let the parents come in, 
and the hole the feeding as it's going through the tube um, and then eventually get to feed them from a bottle. Oh my, this is, um, I mean, I'm sure if you could put all that down in a book, it would be interesting too, but your book is different. And I want to talk about that. The Scuba Zack, it's Scuba Zack meets Thaddeus the Barracuda. And uh, and I know I've asked this of you before, but maybe people listening this morning didn't hear that. Where'd you get the idea and why are you doing this? It's so much fun. Um, Well, I got the idea for this book. Uh, Well, let me go back. I, I wrote a book in 2014 about my dog called Kobe the Dog Boy. And I was inspired to write that book for two reasons. One, because my husband thinks that the dog talks and he's obsessed with the dog. And I decided to write a book based off of his obsession with the dog. And we wake up one morning and the dog is talking. (laughs) <laughs> and and I love your husband already. <laughs> he's he's funny. Well, you know, and I always used to tell him, you know, you're crazy. And he still to this day he still tells me what the dog tells him, and he tells the dog to tell me what he said. Um, so he is that's why I wrote that book, my scuba Zach book. I wrote because we scuba dive all the time, and we encounter barracudas, and they have a bad reputation, and they're not necessarily bad. I've never had a bad encounter with one. And I just figured with the bullying in school and people forming opinions about each other, I decided to write the Scuba Zack book, the scuba diver meeting this barracuda that he's heard stories about, and he's afraid of him until he finds out different about the barracuda. And that's normally how it is in life with us. We meet someone, we automatically form an opinion by the way they look or the way they dress or something they may have said. And sometimes we get to know them and they end up being our best friend. So that's why I decided to write that book. And you did it so well. And we were talking about her next book. She's working on it right now. Uh, it's it's going, of course, to have to do with um, Scuba Zack still. But, yes. Right? But um, the illustrations uh, really make the book. And, and um, Alice was explaining, since she doesn't actually do the illustration, she does the writing, she has to explain to the illustrator what she wants to see. So because, and I told you when I first met you, it was the the illustrations that just drove me crazy. It was so wonderful. I could it's as though I were down in the the ocean, you know, yes. down in the water. Uh, and that was because you could see it's a cute story, but without the illustrations, it's not as effective. Exactly. And I wanted to spark that interest in the children, just to make them want to read for one thing. And that's another problem. We have this literacy problem. Um, worldwide and the kids are not reading so i figure if i could write a book that's fun and very colorful and they can learn something uh, you know lots of kids go to the beach and swim and play in the water but they have no idea what's under the water and i wanted them to know and i just figured that would kind of inspire them to to learn something and read as well well that was good now it was cute alice is waiting for her mother to come to town and Tell us why, of course, you love your mother, but why is she so important to your being an author? <laughs> well, with this book, Scuba Zack Me, that is a barracuda, um, I decided to make a stuffed barracuda toy to go with the book. So I had my mother to come last year, and we sat down, and I made a pattern, and we went to the store and bought a sewing machine, and we began to work, and we came up with this beautiful product afterwards. So now she's constantly asking me, do I have enough barracudas? Do I need to come visit? So she's actually coming on the 4th so we can make more barracudas. And I was actually up last night working on my next book and cutting out barracudas and putting a design on them. So when she get here, we're ready to go. Oh, what a busy woman. But but the nice part, of, you should see the barracuda. It is so cute. So picture this. You have to buy the book. And it's a perfect book. I mean, you know, for Easter, for any time. If you're looking for something for your your grandchild, for your child, whomever's listening here, for a, a neighbor's child, for $14.95, you can buy this beauty, beautiful, it's a paperback uh, book, and it's beautifully illustrated, and then you get this barracuda that's made, you know, it's made with um, material, and imagine a child can hold that barracuda, barracuda 
bar- I'm sorry, the Barracuda, while he or she is reading it or someone's reading it to the child and just followed along and let it swim along. And they actually do that. I've gotten emails or people have told me stories where while they were reading the book, the child was sitting there with the Barracuda swimming through the book. <laughs> So it does happen. So my question is, what if it wants to take a bath with its barracuda? <laughs> well, actually, it will um, it dry. It will dry, and I made sure inside? that the, the paint is just um, little stuffing. But is you can dry it, you can wash it, and put it in the dryer. I made sure that I use the right paint that that doesn't run, and it's just perfect for any child. And I actually have a coworker that bought the book and the barracuda for her son, and she said he carries that barracuda to the store and everywhere. And I said, well, you could throw it in the wash and in the dryer. She's like, really? I was like, yeah. She's when like, he's okay. sleeping because yeah, he's exactly. going to let go of it, right? Yes. She said he takes it everywhere. So I'm happy to hear that. That's really cute. And I was just thinking about, we had a big discussion about what happens to babies that are born, you know, really early. And um, had you ever thought about writing a book to do with, I know you, you wrote the book. I haven't seen the book about uh, the dog and your husband, that should be interesting. I'd love to see that one. But but to do something, uh, a book about, you know, with the little babies and all. I mean, I don't know if that, it's not really for, I don't know what that's for children or not. You're so good at writing books for children. I'm not sure how that would be. Maybe maybe for a family with little kids who's, whose sister or brother's in the hospital and what they're going vaguely through. vaguely crossed my mind, but... I think with that, the reason why I write outside of that is just to get away from work. Yeah. And if I'm writing books about work, it kind of keeps me at work. Yeah. Yeah. I think I understand that now that you said that, because uh, being a neonatal nurse is pretty intense. Uh, We were talking about, why don't you, and I want to just, I want to get back to your book later, but let's go into what you were saying about what the latest thing people do uh, in this field called cooling. I mean, that is a very interesting aspect now of taking care of elders uh, who are really failing as well as uh, babies. Yes. Um, They do um, the cooling on adults and on babies. Um, If there's a problem, they've had um, a stroke or a heart attack and, they need to slow everything down. Um, the babies come out and they're a little sluggish, um, not breathing or maybe not breathing well or heart has stopped. Sometimes it's better to cool their bodies and restart everything. So they will be cool for a couple of days um, and then start to rewarm them over some hours. And usually when they're rewarmed, they wake up and they're absolutely fine. And they've done it with adults and I hear that code being called throughout the hospital a lot at night um, from the emergency room with adults. So it does work. And it's no different than when someone falls into a lake with um, cold ice water. Everything tends to start to slow down as your body starts to cool, which is a good thing. And usually when you're revived, you revive and you're fine. So I think that's the whole concept of it. Well, you know, um just made me think as you were talking, that's why some people, cryogenics, cryogenics mm-hmm. I guess it's called, and that people say, when I die, I want you to freeze me <laughs> so then I can come back again. Well, well that's that will another work. story. <laughs> you know, I know, but there are people who pay actually to do that. I mean, there must be, I don't know the, all that scientific stuff, but that's people who want to be able to come back to whatever they come back to. But um, so, so we were talking about the hospital uh, the Broward Health um, hospitals and how wonderful they are with the, uh, you know, what makes a hospital not the bricks and mortar or the administration, what makes it really, and I didn't mean to lessen the CEOs, but it's the nurses, the doctors, the staff who are always there, um, even the people in the cafeterias. I mean, exactly. it's every day that you're there and you see what, you know, need. And there's something about the Broward Health system that really... Uh, it's been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. And uh, and when you have somebody that comes in there and really needs you, uh, that's all that really is important. Exactly. And uh, I'm sure in your case, you not only have, you know, there's one thing to have a patient, but now you have a whole family. You have the baby and, of course, 
the grandparents, the parents, you know, the kids. I mean, it's. Uh, and, and that's why they, you know, they've made everything family centered care because it's based on not just the patient, but the entire family. Because you want the well being of the family as well as the patient. And that's what everything is centered around. Now. Right. And that's why the they're really trying to raise money to um, to invigorate yes. what they already have, you know, because it's been there a long time. And even though the care is great, there are new systems or new things that they really want to do. As you were just saying, I think the old system was you had the baby and you had you were lucky if a parent could be there. But now it's almost like a little like hospice did, you know, yes. when they brought everybody in to mm-hmm. be with their family. And so now you have that for your 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 babies and and um being on the Broward Health Foundation board we are trying very hard to raise the last million dollars to do that because um the children's hospital is really important we're going to have a big Broward Health ball I don't know if you get to come to that but it's really very wonderful uh we raise money doing that and so it's uh, you know until you really need a hospital whether it's for the neonatal or whether it's for an elder person or from ever, you don't realize what goes on there. You're right. You know, you, you see don't. the ambulances going in and coming out. But yeah. but it is the uh, a great place to, you know, have your life saved. That's true. And so it... They save a lot of lives. Yeah. You know, it used to be that a person said, don't put me in a hospital because I'm going to die there. <laughs> yes, you're you right. used to hear that. Yes. That's not really true anymore. No, they do a lot of great things now. You know, years ago, it was just a basic medicine now, but it's just so much now. People are living so much longer now than what it used to be. And I I think it's wonderful. Yeah, it is. It's true. You know, um, uh, getting back to your, your delightful book. So do you, of course, Easter is... um here and it's gone so you can't get it for easter book but the next i guess you sell a lot at christmas time or what is the hottest time for you to to do this there's really no particular time it's just comes and goes in spurts you know i may not get a sale for weeks or a month and then just out of the blue i'll get sales i've done a couple of um, book fairs i just last month did the it was in the February, the Amelia Isles Book Fair. Oh, it was really? absolutely wonderful. Where was, it was that? It was in Amelia Isles. It's like Oh, um, I know Amelia Isles. Yes, oh my yes. goodness. And so there's a book fair there? It was the end of February and it was Yeah, it the was Amelia great. Island. I have been there absolutely it's a yeah. And so they have a book fair and you got to go up there. I did. It was great. And actually I'm invited. I'm gonna do a book signing the first part of June. There's a bookstore there called the the book loft. So I'll be doing a book signing there um, sometime the first part of June. Well, I have to remember this about uh, that you do that because there are a lot of book, uh, a lot of book fairs. And yes. that's probably important because people there are readers. They're coming there because exactly. they, exactly, you know, they're looking for books, but, and, and the children's books are ne- nowadays are just fantastic what they do. They are. There's a lot of competition out there. Yeah. But I don't know. Do you have? Are there a lot of books that come with a little uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the characters from the book? I didn't see a lot at the book fair, and there were a lot of children book authors there. But um, I really don't remember seeing. That's very special. Yes. I I just absolutely think you have hit on something, and of course, because your price is so inexpensive. I mean, you're. You know, not everyone has a mother who's going to come and give her time and, and effort to do it because <laughs> exactly. you book yourself for fourteen ninety five without that. Yes, but well, with it, it's just uh, it's a natural. So I'm telling everybody, and the way you can get this, uh, just remember this is Pencil Talk Radio. So what you want to do is write this down. You want to go to Alice, and and I'm talking to Alice Cypress. You want to go to Alice's website, which is called TigerFlyBooks dot com. Tiger Fly books.com t-i-g-e-r f-l-y books.com and you're going to be able to get this wonderful little book of it's not so little i mean it's a nice size book but it's paperback so that it, you can hold it and kind of you know mush it around and and it's 14 dollars and 95 cents 
and you get this adorable, well, adorable, but it's part of what's uh, what you read about. So it's a barracuda, and it's um it's pretty frightening looking. It Actually, is. it looks just like the the barracuda in the uh, in the story. Uh, but but more, I want to go back to what you said. The the lovely part about this, and and hopefully even uh, a lot of famous stories for children. Uh, just like I'm looking at my apple sitting here and Snow White and the yes, Seven Dwarfs. Every exactly. time I look at this, I say, you know, I keep thinking of Snow White with the apple. There's always a story, really. Even though it's cute, there's really morality in yes. it and what it is. And that's what you've done. It's been very important that don't, what do they say about um, about the book, don't judge a book by its exactly. cover. Exactly. You can't judge your book by its cover because it's so cute. <laughs> but that's what you're saying in essence. Uh there's more to people. There's more to things mm-hmm. than you think. Give it a chance, mm-hmm. and and that's what you're talking about with the book. Uh, with you know, with all the underwater uh, sea life, uh, there are so many strange looking things under there. And if you do any scuba or if you just do snorkeling, yes, you know, a lot of people can do snorkeling very easily. We we were just um, we went on a cruise, and uh, it part of the trip you got to go to uh, mexico and uh, places where there are islands and and one of the things that they offered of course uh, was the snorkeling Mm -hmm. was the scuba diving and they had lessons and how to do this so for for our audience of course we have an older audience and if you've ever thought of if you haven't snorkeled yet it's a good thing to learn to do it'd be exciting for you it's safe as far as scuba diving, you know, the only way you want to do that is if you get really good instruction and you're very careful because yes. that's the yes. whole part, part about that. Um, the, the, the fish, the underwater sea life, and that's you love scuba diving. I do. Is your husband Zach in the book? No, he's not. I, <laughs> the Zach character, I just wanted him to look like... Anyone who's reading the book. Um, I've had people to ask me, what race is Zach? And I'm like, <laughs> he's every race, you know. And I wanted him to, if a child opened the book, it could possibly look like that child or look like another child. They can't just sit and say, oh, it only looks like one type of a person. Because, yeah, that's... you know, I-, I wanted that multicultural look for Zach. So that was very important. I yes. hadn't really realized that, why you did that. Right. It's true. I couldn't tell you. Uh, what it was because I don't think in those terms, but you know, talking about that, it's um, it is, of course, for so many years, a lot of characters in books, even thinking about Snow White and the Seven mm-hmm. Dwarfs, everybody really was white, very looking like a Caucasian period, mm-hmm. and that wasn't fair because there were so many other people of other races and and ethnicities that couldn't relate to that person, exactly. right? Yes. And so we never, you know, a lot of us never thought about that, but it's uh, it's good. So so that was one of your also, you're, you really are, you have a lot of morality <laughs> in going, don't you? I'm a pretty deep thinker yeah, sometimes. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you're a deep thinking thinker, even with a book as what seems like it's just a nice little children's book, but there's a lot to that. Um, and also, I think, you put in a lot of different fish. They're really exotic. I did, and believe it or not, with the one that I just finished last night, we'll have even more fish in it. Because <laughs> I, after this book, I every time I look at it, I feel that I didn't add enough fish to the book. I want the children to know more. So the next one will be have a variety of fish. So you're really trying to do a lot of things here. Yes. Yeah, that, that's really lovely. And and do you eat fish? I love fish. Okay. <laughs> this fish is great for us, right? It is. Yeah, it's, of course, it, you know, there are a lot of people who are vegans because they can't even think that a fish would be killed so that they I can know. eat it. But well, most of the fish in my book you don't eat. They're that's more true. tropical fish, so I don't have to feel guilty yet. You didn't have point. any lobsters in there. I think I had one. Did you? I think, we didn't I know I had a crab and, you know, right. but I'm not a crab eater. I don't like lobster. I'm just pretty much a fish eater. Right. 
occasional shrimp, but not much. Yeah, right. I guess I shouldn't say that at all, but <laughs> no, but I understand. No, no, I understand that. But you do have to uh, you're thinking about that, and the children, you know, the children aren't thinking about that so much. They're thinking about these swimming, cute little things, and and uh, and maybe we were just talking before that you could get if you want to get a really cute gift, you buy the book, then buy the barracuda, and then go and get a little fish tank, small. And have some fish in yes. it, which would be another to teach them. And they can name their little fish, give them names. <laughs> that would be great. Oh, so that's... A, that yes, it would cute. be great. It would be. Yes. I've actually had... Um, I've gone to several well, different schools. I actually went home to Alabama, Valley Grand, Alabama, um, last month. And I read to the elementary school there, and they were very excited. Um, last week and week before last, I went to a couple of schools in Miami, um, with some little girls that are part of the Honey Shine program, um, which is a program that Alonzo Morning, the NBA basketball player, him and his wife started that program. And they met, have kids that are mentored in the evening time. So I went and read and just talked to them about how they become an author. And they absolutely love the book. They love the idea of learning how to be an author. And they were really excited when they find out that the end story of what happens with Zach and Thaddeus. Alice, it's wonderful having you here. We've just now run out of time, and it's such a pleasure. I love it. I just have this smile on my face all the time every time you're here. Okay, everybody, you want to go to purchase the book, go to tigerflybooks.com, and uh, it's just a, a fantastic book. It's called Scuba Zach Meets Thaddeus the Barracuda, and you'll be sure to get the little uh, barracuda uh, that comes with it. Thanks again for being here. Thank you. 